so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, we're going to, I want to suggest that we add an agenda item right at the top um, to introduce our newest board member. And Hannah has said she would recommend. <laughs> Uh, I move to add an agenda item to introduce our newest board member. <laughs> Seconded. Oh, <okay>. <laughs> um, Joseph came in this late this, uh, this morning and, and we did an orientation with Ellsworth and Jen and myself. Um, so I will let him introduce himself and then we'll go around the table quickly. Yeah, do we need to approve the agenda before doing that? Probably. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Next president here. Um, <laughs> I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Go ahead, Joseph. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, everybody. I'm Joseph Massa. Um, glad to be here. I'm very glad to be here. Um, and had a very nice orientation this, this morning. So. I thank everybody for, for doing that, taking the time for that. Um, let's see about myself. Well, I'm from Iowa, um, but spent a lot of years in Minnesota. Just recently came down here in the past year um, to be near family. Grew up in West Branch um, and uh, uh, on a farm, which isn't too much of a stretch. If you live in Iowa, you find some of us farm kids. Um, and... Uh, um, my background is in psychology, um, BA, MA, MPH, PhD. Um, I'm currently the director of programs for uh, a uh, nonprofit social service agency in Iowa City, Successful Living. So we do a lot of work in outreach counseling, housing, intensive psychiatric rehabilitation, dehabilitation, those types of services. Um, before that, uh, I was the executive director for a uh, national uh, adoption agency um, run through the uh, Methodist Church. And before that was the executive director for the uh, nonprofit foundation of the VA Medical Center in M Minneapolis uh, for a number of years and worked for a suicide prevention um, foundation before that. And before that, was a school psychologist uh, for a number of years in New York City. So, uh, anyway, I'm glad to be here. So, welcome. Um, thank you. Welcome. Appreciate it. I, I will tell you that he apparently contacted the mayor looking for a way to be involved with the city and to contribute. And between the two of them, they came up with library board. So, that's great. <laughs> Hannah, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'm Hannah Schultz. I'm in my... I think fifth year of my term. Um, I four, think fourth. Could be fourth. Is it fourth? Okay. Okay. Some Time number of years <laughs> since our term began. Um, I came on with DJ and Tom at the end of the table. Uh, and I, my day job is I work for Feeding America's National Office. Oh, nice. You know me. I, my name is Carol Kirsch, and I am a retired librarian. I worked in various kinds of libraries. And I'm in my last year of service. And I'm Claire Matthews. I've been here, I think, a year almost. Um, and I am a teacher librarian at Lucas Elementary School. I've worked in libraries, teen services, et cetera, around. Nice to meet you. I'm John Rayburn. Uh, this is my first year. Uh, and uh, I'm a retired professor of English and American studies. Very nice. I'm Tom Rockland. I retired from the university. I was uh, actually, I taught educational psychology there um, before I became an administrator and I retired as a VP for student life and retired so, for five years. And I think this is my fourth year on the board. I think it's my fourth year on the board as well. I'm DJ John, and uh, I do IT consulting in ServiceNow. Uh, if you've ever heard of that, um, and uh, let's see, I, my main reason for, for being involved in the library is I've, I was a very young parent, and uh, I feel like this is the best I can do uh, to basically 
try and improve the place that gave us so much care in our time of need. So, very nice. I'm Dan Stevenson. Um, I joined the board in 2021 uh, outside of this. I teach eighth grade U.S. history down in West Liberty. Great. I'm involved in the union. Hi, I'm Robin. This is my 12th year on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and when I'm not here, I work over the college of medicine. So I teach and oversee the global health work. So we went yep. uh, okay. Ellsworth, mm -hmm. uh, the director, I've been here uh, four years. And for anyone wondering, Hannah's cohort started July of 2019. Well, in so the, we're finishing the, the, the city oh, council right. appoints oh, yeah. board members every two years. And you and Dan and John are members of the same class. Um, despite starting at three. Right, right despite <laughs> starting at three. Dan is the lone person who started at the beginning of, the, yeah. of that class. So we're very, very happy to have you. Okay. Um, public discussion. There's no public members here, so I assume there's no discussion. Moving on to uh, number four, strategic planning update. And we'll let Ellsworth lead that discussion. Yeah, this is, um, um, unless this is your, your first cycle through for the update, this plan could look pretty familiar. Um, we're finishing out our third year of a three year plan. So we're um, we're, we're seeing the goals being, being met and moving forward. Um, every time I do an update, I I feel so thankful for the work of the staff and the leadership team to make these aspirations come true. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased with what we had to report, but happy to answer any questions. Um, and you've got the team here who can go into more specifics as we need to. Um, just to orient folks, we did include the entire plan um, text, but I shaded those things that were new for easier access um, and to kind of highlight uh, the most up-to-date things. Is that different than the way you did it last time? Last time you only included the, is that right? The, the, the last things time, that were changed. For the quarterly updates. I, I, I kind of like this. Okay. where you get the whole thing. Um, I had a question about the uh, the social worker uh, research that we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, particularly interested in that, and I'm just wondering um, what the timeline looks like for that and what the communication plan um, to the board looks like on that. Yeah, and Jason's a point person for that, if you want to speak. Sure. We met this week with um, the practical Officer, I don't know her actual title is, but she wants to listen to social work. Yeah. Um, Sarah and the two students. Uh, one is a graduate student, Zach, and one is a graduate student, Grace. Um, both, I believe, in the final years of their work. Um, this is one of their, they do practicums, um, field practicum work. This is a new one. This came out of a much larger grant project at the university that Carol Lodston mm -hmm. helped start over the university. And we have two folks identified for placement here. We have outlined sort of a broad overview of like potential goals for their, their practical projects. Um, and then it's sort of up to them and their coordinator to decide what they feel is what of interest and something they can accomplish in the semester. Sure. Um, of course, we've out given many, many hours worth of our base time and um, explained all the various things that we're going to be doing here. Sure. So there's a lot to, for them to pick and choose from. Um, right now we're in the background check stage, so they just have to clear that. Sure. We'll be able to meet them and talk more in depth about what they'd like to cherry pick from the after this, which is cool. cool. Um, most likely, like, some of the bigger term goals would be to help this be a recurring program so that placement could be happening every semester potentially. Mm -hmm. um, or they could identify for us a longer term goal, um, something that we could take to the city to say, there's enough here. We have a need for this. Um, 
and that could really make a difference in library operations or city operations if it was a multi-departmental thing. Because um, there is also a placement over at Senior Center. So they'll get a good, the, the cohort will get a good overview of many different city services. But we feel like this is going to be a great introduction for library services for these two I'm glad Kara's involved in that, and then especially um, after going to ILA and in, I forget, is it Davenport's library that has the first full time? Yeah. And Coral's a little fire. That was great. Coral was a great position right now in their country. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. So we don't have, there is no social worker per se that works here as a permanent position. It's been a, this is a, a third year, three year, so this has been kind of a study of mm -hmm. very useful to help us accomplish something instead of trying to create a position from scratch. Well, they, they'll be on site full time? Uh, no, they'll, they do this in the school. And, other placements. So uh, I believe anywhere from like eight to fifteen hours. And that's one of the goals I think we have too is just the reality check of how many hours would we need for this to be to have a significant impact on staff readiness to work with our populations and for our patrons to get their needs met. Um, because we know as a library that's open much broader hours than traditional business hours, even one 40 hour position might not move the needle. So I think this will give us a more realistic picture of how would we articulate those needs when the time comes to really make an ask. Other questions, comments on the board about the plan? I don't know the audience for the this whether it's internal or whether it goes to others. The reason I ask this is it's really a small point, but this is in on page 4A3, and it has to do with the bookmobile. And uh, the sentence reads, this change was made without increasing staff, and the effects of the additional service hours have an impact across the library. I tried to think, what is that impact across the library? Um, and something more, a little bit more specific, would be would be useful here, if it's strictly an internal document. It probably doesn't make any difference. But mm -hmm. that's a good question, and I appreciate that you asked it. Um, this is, I would say, it's it's both internal and external. We do share this. We haven't traditionally shared the updates, but we will share something as a report at the end. Um, so this is both for stakeholders like the board and if other city departments ask for updates, um, but it, it could also be public facing. So any questions like that or reminders to help flush it out would, are really good. Um, I would say these, all of these updates would have additional supporting documentation that kind of complements it, mm -hmm. but obviously that's not all attached to the same place. So um, that's, a, that's a good question. I just let me, I, I, I wondered what they were and I couldn't quite imagine what they were. So anyway, um, a, a, another concern, and maybe the board has talked about this when this was drawn up, has to do with the, uh, in the same page, the plans for changes to the general availability of compact discs and DVDs. And what I'm slightly concerned about is that uh, and the, the plan or the uh, uh, the document talking about the acquisition of Hoopla is a, but Hoopla is the music Hoopla provides is all popular music. They're the only venue in which non popular music, that is classical music or opera, uh, is available, I think, in the library is through CDs. And if those are being winnowed, then we're going to lose it, that. Uh, Availability to a minority, I realize that, but a still significant minority. It seems to me a library. It's one of the things that impressed me most about this library when I first came to it. It had a very robust collection of music for people to check out. 
So I'm, I just say that as a caution, and I don't know whether how much you know is being winnowed out, and it's not quite clear. But I I thought I'd raise it because it's a minority, but it's a minority that we ought to try to serve. Yeah, I think that there are a number of challenges maintaining the CD and DVD collections. The formats were really never designed for public use the way that we do. So mm. um, it's unrealistic that we would test every item as it comes back to make sure it's still functional. And we do get you know some ongoing feedback about condition. Not a lot, but I think Anne can also speak to um, the particulars of sort of how we're assessing the use of those and how that fits into the bigger plan. Mm -hmm. So one issue, so there's a reason why we haven't gotten rid of the music CD collection just yet, and that is because we have not found, especially for classical music or opera, a good resource that could replace it. Unfortunately, compact discs are becoming much harder to purchase. A lot of musical artists and publishers are just not putting them out. Mm -hmm. And so we were unable to get the large swath of media that we were able mm -hmm. to do. Um, they're moving away. I think right now the compact disc sales in the United States are less than the first year that compact discs were introduced in the 1980s. Wow. I mean, that is like kind of staggering yeah. to think about how huge a shift this is. And that's again that same issue. It's just libraries not being able to provide content to their audiences because of the way that the market is structured. And so we haven't made the leap yet, but that leap is coming because we are unable to maintain or purchase new things. Okay. I didn't know all this. That's sad, I think. It's, yeah. <laughs> and as, as Sean mentioned, um, it, uh, when we're looking at Hoopla, and, and I take that as fact that a lot of the music available, available there, I, I don't know for, for myself, but I, it is largely popular. Are there any other alternatives out there from a digital distribution standpoint that would feed that need that John's talking about? There is. There's a few. Um, I think Alexander Street Press has. It's just not as dynamic. It's not like you can put it on a phone and download it. It's like okay. web streaming through. Um, right. Yeah. It's okay. Um, so just trying to find that, that yeah. niche. The big problem with Hoopla is it doesn't have Sony, which is a big music publisher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're on a, a different service, which is far more expensive. And yeah, yeah that's an unstarted. And you can download like three a month or something, oh, like joy. songs, or songs. So you can oh, be able wow. to do all of Beethoven's uh, Seventh Symphony. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that usually hard to spend a lot there until February. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll especially with my brother, how this thing turn out? <laughs> Is is that also very expensive? Yeah, I haven't looked at the price of this. Alexander, I don't think so, but it is kind of like you logged into you know, two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and like you're going to a site, and then you're navigating the site, and then you're gotten to your content, and you're clicking on the link. It just it is yeah. that's intuitive for how people. Yeah, it's really lot. great for academic libraries because it gives you extensive notes about yeah. the music and histories. And but for a public audience that just I just want to download the yeah. symphony and move on with my life. Um, <laughs> could you also have that for like live opera performances mm -hmm. and things, plays um, that we've looked at in the past. And it's just been this well, the content is good and fine, and we'll probably interact with it, but it's just. If I had to hand sell it to you at the desk, I just feel like I would see that step forward. <laughs> yeah. So it's always been good. Let me know when you upgrade yeah. the, the UI UX. UX. You know, request. <laughs> right. <Whatever Yeah>. right. <laughs> it's a lot like video, right? That that streams and then we make sure the DVD and we'll be able to yeah, so they, a lot of that stuff. Race. Television shows. Never made it into the media now. Yeah. Um, lots of movies, um, especially if they're put out by Netflix or Netflix or Amazon Prime, we're never going to see it. Yeah. So a huge portion of the culture just not being accessible to uh, mm -hmm. the yeah. Spotify is now doing audiobooks too. <laughs> There's a book in this. 
There is something to write about this. Unification of American culture. Yeah. Well, wanna draw, we can there you go, John. No. <laughs> Project. <laughs> Just the guy, right? Through writing perspective. John, earlier comment just um, about is this document internal or external? Amy, wonder what does this look like at the end of your three year plan? Like, what does this document look like to sing the praises of what you've been working on? Because it, it made huge, important changes to the library that you guys should. Add. I mean, I, I know you advertise as you do them, but to, it's, I like the idea of having a look back over the last three years. What's what's been done to build our community access and all these things. Like, what does this look like from a public point of view at the end of your three-year plan? Yeah, it's kind of changed, uh, you know, depending on the years and depending on what the plan covered. This will be, um, I guess I was technically here at the end of last, last, the last plan. Um, this is the first plan that was been during my the whole plan of it during my time. Um, I think we'll probably do a, a narrative report and probably some social media, some like blog updates. Yeah, you don't have to like, have like a full um, answer right now. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> yeah, but, the, the, the but I just crux want... of it will be celebrating those successes and sort of saying that like, this is this is the work that, that we've done on these important pieces. This plan, um, in some ways, is very traditional, and in some ways, is not traditional at all. Because we had the advantage of really formalizing it after knowing that COVID was coming, we didn't really know what it was going to look like, but we knew it was a thing. Um, that gave us the leverage to sort of pick these three focus areas um, that really gave space for um, serving the public during that closure, during that real crisis time, and then growing out of it. So. I think it will lend itself well to a, a narrative um, of um, sort of like, remember way back when um, we were doing that curbside and like, here's the upswing of back where we're coming. Mm -hmm. um, we now have all of the general statistics from the last fiscal year as well, which will fit really nicely into sort of some comparisons. So I, I think that we'll, we'll do a number of different reporting um, styles with it. I think it's also nice to sort of dovetail the closure of the last with the introduction of the next. So this will we'll probably try to position it as sort of a launch pad for this is what we're, we're pleased to hear that we've accomplished and I'm sure you've seen and, and here's what we're taking on next. Um, because the next one will will have much less of a tangible recovery focus from the closure. I just see so much in here about community connections that you've built over the last three years with different stakeholders and different um, Iowa City, I don't know, I'm just like a community mobile crisis unit, the school district, um, just Parks and Rec, Human Rights Office, you just made so many partner connections. You just, I don't know that just a patron who walks mm -hmm. into the library, would, who loves your library and comes every week would see these great connections that you built. So I just was curious about how you want to, yeah. I think you should think about how you should sing these connections that you've made because they're really fantastic. And this is uh, our PR person, Manny. This will be the first time he's been here at the close of a plan. So I think he might have some good ideas too. To work in how to really celebrate that as with any plan you know some of sometimes like one sentence represents two and a half years of work <laughs> and i really try to encourage all staff to spend time with this whenever we would update or things like that to remember what this you know, these this is what our days add up to and that it's it's actually pretty significant and um and i just hope that they feel the pride that they should over the really hard work. Um, it happens both in, in the back room and in planning and that kind of stuff, but also on the front line. So. Other comments relevant to the plan? We will move on then to um, 4B, second quarter statistics and financials review. Um, 
know, you want to talk about our meeting, Claire? Or mm -hmm. I like to hear voices. I know my voice sounds oh, terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, or if people have we have questions or concerns, I guess we could start there about the financial reports. Um, then we'll move to the statistics. Um, do, do you? I, 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 well, I was just going to say during our little meeting, I had to remind myself not to look just at the percentages because it's really um, each line. The percentages of amount spent seem dramatic, but then it's just really like 11 things <laughs> make a big difference. But also we talked a lot of the, I don't, we didn't see anything glaring or, and also things that seem dramatic were explained by year, once a year purchasing or um, scheduled expected purchasing. So um I don't know if anyone else saw anything that they want to comment on, but I think mostly we just had questions, you know, what is this explain? What's a chargeback? What's this? What's that? And I, I do think that Elsworth's summary is, is quite helpful. Um, the committee only talked about the financials. We didn't discuss the statistics. Um, which are also included in this report. I do, do people have comments, questions, concerns about the circulation statistics? Every time I see them, I'm amazed at how big some of these numbers are. Yeah. I wonder, um, so their statistics are um, comprehensive uh, and extensive. I just wonder, where does your eye go in this report, Ellsworth, or, or any of the leadership people? But when you look at it, what, where do you start? I typically start by looking at the, the big jumps, what what percentage-wise. What's, what's changing a lot. And then I do exactly what Claire is saying. Then I double check that it's not a zero line that's four dollars was spent on or right. four items were purchased. Right. Um, and then I just kind of do a, a reality check of is that expected? Is it unexpected? Um, what's the reasoning for it, etc. Um, in this particular set of both statistics and expenditures, um, while there are some things that look a little high, a little low across the board, it feels pretty typical to me. Um, First quarter, um, I'm sorry, uh, this quarter update um, is a great time to just do that real, like, if things are starting to skew, this is a great time to take action. And, and I really don't feel that um, significantly about any any particular lines. I There's still some renorming after COVID in some of the, across the board in some of the reports, but um, again, I feel pretty confident with with everything here. And I don't know if any of the coordinators feel like anything in their particular areas um, deserves significant comment, but feel free. If, I know. did have one question um, under which is the very top of the report, general Iowa City, and then underneath is downloads and streaming. Are, are those in included in the general? Like, it's the very top of the... So it's general Iowa City, like. So those would be patrons in Iowa City, um, your average citizen. And then below that are different other types of cars that um, are available in that state. The big names in private or preschool. But these are these are circulation numbers, right? And so. So general Iowa City, we'll just look at the first quarter. It says 180,632 circulations and then underneath is downloads and streaming is 74,000 is that included in the hundred no they're two separate. It's two separate a lot of the ways that we um pull out statistics is based on state reporting and so some of those lines are there um, sometimes for why we needed this detail and it's because we need to use a first state report or they're grouped together in specific ways because we need to use the state report. Um, 
a couple of things just to mention. Uh, the type of format, like we, the circulation by type of format is the one that I use a lot. That's is collections together. And when you're looking at certain things, there might, especially some of our collections are so small that like just an extra circulation can boost something. So like the art to go up, it's, um, it may only be like only 20 more things circulating very well. Yeah. Or we introduce, we reintroduced the Express DV collection this last quarter. That's why that it is the charts. But if it really is there, there's no desserts. And an exa another example is why circulating equipment down 50%. Well, we had a grant for hotspots for a little while. We no longer have that grant. So we had to do a session with some hotspots and therefore there's just less use in the bank if they're not available too, because they've been checked out for longer than the loan period, that will impact the period. And just out of curiosity, I notice you lump general fiction and fiction express together, but you break out nonfiction express. There's never anything on that express shelf for the fiction anybody puts. <laughs> checked out, but is there... There's a really convoluted reason why it's broken out. Okay, well, never mind. It's okay. <laughs> it was that the Express Fiction covers all the Dewey. The Express Nonfiction covers all of the Dewey okay. numbers, and then we break it down by Dewey. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, but okay. I'm talking about like 50 something items, but yeah. Okay, sorry. Thank <laughs> you for the precursor. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting to look at like how programs affect your um, circ stats too. Just one that jumped out at me was the books in other languages, mostly because I'm trying to find children's books in Arabic and it's a struggle of mine. But, um, and you know, it's a struggle in the United States, I right. think. Um, but I, I think, was it Sam had a program where she was bringing people from Kirkwood mm -hmm. that were new English language yeah. speakers? Mm -hmm. And just wondering, like, if that, because I think it was just a one time, but wanted to keep going with that. And maybe it hasn't happened yet. And I was just kind of curious about that, how that program would then affect your statistics. Just using on that a little bit i know it's not a great a huge collection or anything like that but um books in other languages are just on my mind lately <laughs> uh we um in the strategic plan we talk about how we subscribe to the urban libraries council and the big topic this week was where do you buy books and, and languages other than english because lots of libraries are having a very difficult time finding new vendors who supply that and it's just been fascinating to get some more vendors get a list of it. I find we have some good luck. Also. I have good luck. I take anything in Ukrainian as well, which is a new a new hot. Mm. <laughs> well, like, I think it's done larger system physically send collection staff to other countries, yes. whether that's for something like a, a big book festival or fair, or to go specifically to purchase. Um, that's not a very scalable model. For most <laughs> libraries, um, and unfortunately, while we want to share information because of the you know physically moving materials, which are often heavy, we really can't you know buddy up and say, okay, this year we'll send <laughs> this person from from A yeah. and they'll come back with everything. Um, so it's yes. I keep hoping that we're going to see a major distributor take on more of that. Um, but so far, it's yeah. Other questions, comments? Yeah. Moving on, we will do the policy review of the recording and streaming policy. Um, this one the board does have to vote on. Was <laughs> uh, this one, uh, you know, we sent in part of the committee about what to do with as we read. Well, this is a regular three year, but the last time we reviewed it, had Mediacom had just expired our cable program, so we were no longer receiving funding that way. And so we were no longer a public access channel for the first time in years. 
<laughs> and so where the policy sort of you know the bones are the same so you're talking about basically creating a public access channel from nothing back in 79 to creating keeping that maintaining that as a streaming service basically a, a channel to be through YouTube and Facebook um, back then there was a lot more Think about in terms of uh, original content creation. So they were creating TV channel shows from scratch with right? the help of um, pay TV, but also staff here that were funded through the cable companies. So uh, we sort of talked about, but usually our, what we normally do is go and look around at other libraries. How do they write theirs? How does ours look comparatively? There is no other library that I can find that has a similar thing to this. Um, that's how you make um, service was and is. Um, lots of libraries put their things up on YouTube, but nobody really says there's here's guidelines for that. So um, rather than scrapping it and putting it into lots of other um, policies, we decided we should just um, stick with it at least for now and just modify it to make it modern and be more upfront about the, the time, most of the time spent for the staff here, how best to service. We get a lot of requests from the public for a table of their event in the meeting room. And for a long time, we were kind of sure we might have time. And as we've done more and more of our own program recordings, we've just become a little bit more intentional here about how we want to staff time. Um, so it doesn't say it doesn't say that we can't still tape your event. And in fact, what we usually do is say this is right for a sponsorship. We when voters was here last night. They approached us differently, but basically what they needed from us was um, a recording opportunity of the event um, so they could broadcast to a wider audience. And it's a really important program on transparency and government. So uh, of course we want to sponsor it. So. Uh, that this sort of still works for us in that way. But you can see a lot of it. Um, other questions or concerns? Hmm. Yeah, I look like you're about to say something. <laughs> no, I'm I just would I'm not sure what 703.54 means. That's the one that says that the board has access. Yeah. Um, I think it means this can be broadcast. Okay. Um, and in the past, there was, I think, probably some historical use of the channel as an advocacy network for the board and for asking for the mm -hmm. support potential. Okay. And so I think it, it's been in there since the 80s, basically. And so, I think I just sort of so have like, full access to it. It's not relevant, so I thought I'd leave it in there in case so, anything sort of happens in the next few years. Yeah, I don't see it doing any harm. On the channel. I think we used to, when we were building this extension of the building, okay, that committee was constantly um, having a program where they had different speakers about the use of the library, and it was kind of in between the friends and the trustees sponsoring that. But it was doing special projects. I just remember seeing this a lot ago. I think it comes up with some of the intellectual freedom. Right, and special it's topics, just, right. Um, yeah. I start a weekly chat with the board, so. That's <laughs> 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 It'll help us see what the public comment period so long here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one shows up here. Yeah, maybe it's time for another practicum student from the film studies yeah, right. Yeah, right. department <laughs> to come be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, in that case, can I have a motion to approve the policy as written? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat>
Moving on to staff reports. Um, before Ellsworth does his report, I, I this is the these are the coordinators, and they're the ones who will be. We didn't do <laughs> introduce them, but a couple of them have reports. So um, <clears throat> that's that's who's filling us in when we need more information. Um, Ellsworth. Yeah, I'm um, a little bit of a downer. Um, first part of my report, uh, which I, I don't typically do. I, I mean, I try to focus on on things that we're that making progress on. But I just thought it was important to note for the board that this has been sort of an interesting, um, dense occurrence of behavior issues uh, from the beginning of the year. As I noted, there's lots of reasons that would happen this time of year, and it's not completely unexpected, but um, it just felt like entire days were being lost to uh, following up on these, working with police or other community partners, um, doing all of the appropriate reporting, things like that. Um, and it really, um, I know I felt really sort of taxed by it um, and and trying to make sure staff feel supported and every, all those steps along the way. So it felt like an appropriate time to bring it up, just want to keep an eye on it with this group. Um, I would say that we have have not seen an uh, escalation on top of this since this report was written. So I am hopeful that this was sort of a, a beginning of the new year issue and that we're starting to, to get back to normal. Um, but that's why I included it. Um, the rest of it is pretty typical as far as budget process updates of where we are in the year. Um, and this is the, the, the budget amendment that I noted is the first time since I've been here that we've processed a budget amendment. This was a suggestion by finance staff to take advantage of current pricing for the clock replacement and not let that sit another six or eight months and then see an increase in the same product. Um, so that's why we move forward with that. Um, and then an update on our strategic plan progress. I was uh, fortunate to be able to meet with Tom earlier this week to talk a little bit about the progress we've made as a planning committee and what, what next steps to take and how to bring that to the board for a bigger review um, soon. And I anticipate having um, more of a draft to share in our next meeting. Happy to answer any questions. Can you speak about the behavior issues? Yes. Um, are these mostly juvenile or are they adults? I would say most of this, the beginning of the month were adults um, with a, a mix of, of some teen issues mixed in. The reason I was asking is whether it's indicative of a, a rough summer coming, but not necessarily. I don't. I, I'm. I don't think I'm going to make that connection there. I think it could be. Um, it seems like some years we've had summers with teens, but there seem to be groups at age. This feels more like a scarcity of community resources. Different for, um, okay. especially related to mental health and drug and alcohol okay. abuse. Set the different um, strategy to address things. Yes, and we we work really hard. Um, to not default to calling the police to try to, to explore those avenues to connect people with resources first, but these instances just did not lend themselves. Either those agencies weren't staffed enough or they, their response time was too long or um, they just weren't able to, to come and assist. Um, I will say that the instance that I was involved in when we did call for police support I was consistently pleased and impressed with the way that responding officers listened to the situation and treated everyone involved with respect. And um, I felt like they they really um, sort of took on our approach to working with with the individuals involved, um, which I I so appreciate because um, you know. Not everybody um, had those skills in, in a time of, of high you know, escalated time, but but I was really pleased with the folks that were there. Um, one thing I emailed you earlier about possibly a lockdown policy. 
what we have um, uh, weapons in the federal. Yes. And whether we need to look at this and start, start discussing it all about if we have more gunplay in the federal. Yeah, we've talked about a lockout and lockdown policy. Um, I've worked a little bit with the legal team on what that could look like. The complication is that each situation is so unique it is, uh, that it's hard to to say like this is the perimeter. Like this is if something happens right. within X number of feet, you do this. But it's also really um, it doesn't feel helpful to to have a policy that doesn't have. Um, what is the rec center do? They have a policy. I think they handle each thing and I'm doing what do you guys do Alice training? We did recently have done the Alice training in the past and we did one just last month. Uh about people. Could have been two, but um, it was in the yeah. And the yeah. hips offered as optional for staff who want to participate. Um we I mean it's terrible to do it. But similar. <laughs> it's similar. Um, it's we're, we're sort of in the unpacking phase of working on a policy draft where we figure out you know, where can we expect to get information from, and is it what if we hear something through a hawk alert that hasn't been right. confirmed by the police department or things like that. The pet ball, the gunshots on the pet ball that happened just recently was a really interesting example of of how things could or, or shouldn't work. Or it happened so fast that by the time we even really were cognizant of the issue and ready to send something to all staff, the police had secured the area. It was taped off. At that point, they were not restricting any foot traffic. Um, and I mean, it was just a matter of just a matter of a few minutes. Um, but other things like the the issue at the parking ramp with the gun that happened a little while ago, that one, well, it was handled very quickly. It was it was much longer than the sped ball issue. So that one there was time to wonder, you know, should we be is this a lockdown situation? Is there any threat to public safety? Does it add threat to move into a lockdown? Um so is our, is our part most frequently used parking ramp? Is it recommended by the police that we make the public aware before they go into that ramp that there's been a hawk alert, alert that there's a gun in there? Increased violence potential in that ramp, or is it recommended by the police that we just stay silent? Because this is the ramp. I mean, it's, it's connected with the, with the library. So the Dubuque ramp is not where the took place. Okay, but if, if we've got a situation, 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 um, situation, and what is the recommendation that we make something like a hawk alert more available or that we just, um, so, uh, you know, there's, there's got to be experts that would tell us what's the appropriate action. Right. We've posed some of these questions and we've also pulled some example policies from other libraries. Uh, that's kind of where we got the idea of having a part both a lockout and a lockdown yeah. um and i think we're, we're just gonna have to keep keep working on it my guess is this will be an instance where there's somewhat limited input until we can we put forward a draft and then once there's something written down they'll be it'll be easy to sense. get that hard feedback back to say like this is legally we were fortunately suggesting we don't do that, but here's some other right, language. Right. Um, and I think that there's some conversation at the Urban Library Council group that we're part of about what this could look like. And um, I reached out to IAPLA, but it doesn't sound like most libraries in Iowa have anything like this. Yeah. It seems like. Yeah. Well, just I'm, I'm just thinking about the role of police in making that call. Um, we've got multiple city buildings in close proximity, and it seems a little weird for each building to make a call. Um, so in some ideal world that might not exist, I would have the police make that call. Um, they have more situational awareness than any other department does. However, wouldn't their primary focus at that time be at the incident and not doing the individual offices unless there's some communication structure set behind Right. Them. You'd have to have more you'd have to have a system for notification. 
So anyway, involving them in the discussion certainly seems. I think we we may be able to bring something back uh, for next month or the following, um, but it's definitely on on our radar. Um, I think it's it's also an issue where we want to make sure staff feel very empowered to take action and do not feel like my step one is to find oh who do you have copy that policy like right? mm -hmm. where is it on the internet right uh, because I want to make sure I do it right we want we want to make sure that they it's something that can be easily acted on that has that that room for um you know I, I made this decision because of these inputs and and that's what we're doing um another factor that complicates things a little bit with police communication is um, when I was here that Saturday, it was the, the gunfire on the Penn Mall. I was really here as a patron with my kids. Mm -hmm. and, um, when it happened, I did have my, I think I had my bag of these, so I put it on <laughs> um, and was kind of working on staff and figuring things out, calling the police. And as I walked back through the building to sort of update the service desk, what I had learned um, multiple times, a patron would, would interrupt and sort of say, I called the police too, and we're, we're in the clear. Or one person even said, like, well, I called for the library. Mm -hmm. And blank. So we'd also need to work something into a plan where the police understand, is this a library staff person calling to get right. information? Am I a patron of the building? Mm -hmm. right. Because I think that that could, um, we wouldn't want Money there the response. directive of a lockdown to be given to right. um, a patron, to a well-meaning patron, yeah. um, who or, or much worse patron. case, an, uh, an ill-meaning patron. Right. right. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the the public expects does have a level of complexity. I think I'll just uh increase in problematic behaviors, I think, speaks to your eventual conversation about a social worker on site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this is isolated, but um, you're saying rough summers, and I haven't been here through any of that, so I don't know yes. that. But um, that, yes, that's, yeah. but like having someone on site, you can have these relationships already built or, you know, like have relationships at the very least between a social worker and a staff member so that there's support for the staff, which is, as you say, is exhausting and scary and frustrating. And just to have someone with appropriate training, I don't know, maybe a practicum student is a great way to look at what might be good practices for you here. I don't know. That's one of our biggest hopes of the practicum students can help us understand what the best sort of on the on the floor response should be. Um, and I don't mean this report to indicate that typically we don't deal with behavior issues. Behavior issues are a normal part of library operations. Absolutely. And this one just felt like a real spike. And while we have some, I would say sort of patron to patron issues around all different topics, one that happened this month that was that, that felt racially motivated was just especially just just disappointing and surprising and really out of the blue groups that didn't know each other uh, different ages just uh, really felt counter to everything that we, we hope happens in the building. I think that kind of interaction can be especially difficult for staff who are working so hard every day to try to move the ball on. On these big issues. I certainly, I personally wouldn't mind if you included just a summary in, in your director's report since you're predicting that behavior patterns might normalize. Yeah. I mean, next month, I, I just would be. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah, yeah, just right. because I, yeah, it's a, you know, it's, it's a big concern because for staff, it must just really be hard. And then, One thing for context is we've been busy. I mean, it feels pre-pandemic. Uh, I came in on Saturday to work for two to fix all the computers were full. Um, the lobby was full of people. The children's room was full. There's a line at the help desk. And so it just, there's just far more people using the library, which is great. 
it's just there's probably no right. That's a good point. Right. And a lot of people are still kind of relearning how to be in public spaces. Or, <laughs> and to, no doubt. You know, I think a lot of us got kind of used to that model where there weren't many people around. Um, uh, one one thought that I'm having um, has to do with just making sure we're doing everything for our, our staff and volunteers for from a wellness perspective, because I know that events like that can be really um, dramatic, demoralizing, and I have every confidence, but I just want to bring that up that if there's anything for there are any opportunities there, I want to know. Other issues or questions, comments about the source report? Then we will move on to Jason's adult services report. Having some small successes, when are eight programs doing better than one Started doing this in curbside. We, much to Angie's chagrin, as she had bought most of the mugs. So adults were out for a children to be right there. <laughs> so all the cute little rabbit mugs were gone. <laughs> grown ups. Grown ups. But guess what? We liked them too. <laughs> um, a lot of good info there from Victoria's hard work and her interns and her volunteer crew. Um, and talking about. You know, working with building those relationships for the summer, that's sort of towards doing a lot of great work with Chelsea in the Southeast. Um, stuff from Stacy with the new cricket machine. So, if I'm in place, that if you'd like, it's just going to not bad. So, it's going to be a lot of great work. It's not going to be any time you know, that she's in the, the drop in person, she'll be mm -hmm. able to show you how to use it. Um, but also, there's like special crafting days and uh, one off events too for each slide that I put in. And then she's always great about taking photographs, so you get a slideshow of the things. <laughs> I do love seeing adults do drink things. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys plan the mugs for the year of the rabbit, or is that just coincidental? We had three choices that Mara designed. It's partially probably. <laughs> it's perfect. It's even a couple It's not perfect. Thank you, Jason. Um, Community and Access Services Department. Um, the head of that department is not here today. She and the, or Sam and um, Angie are at a conference, I think, in New Orleans okay. for people. Um, I don't know. It's her reports are always have a lot of detail. I'm not sure that there's anything to be added. People have questions, maybe they're significantly less colorful with the new template. <laughs> <laughs> they have made the record in the case. <laughs> <laughs> they're used to But Jason has adapted very well to the coloring of his report. <laughs> anyway, I love the order. <laughs> Sam fights. <laughs> Good for that. Yeah. Overall, I do like the template. I think I that was in the yeah. yeah. I, I like think that was work. something in the strategic plan that I glossed over. But I do overall like the format. Yeah, I think it's helpful. And okay, so moving on then to the development department report would be Katie. I'm um anybody have questions for Katie or your report just brought something that's tangential because when you had the quote from the person on the special disabilities the child disability it made me wonder are we continuing to do this at the special hours for families with autism the children that have autistic needs there was one in the last quarter so we are going to change it okay good it just made me think about the Families are needing these unique places. So I I appreciate we haven't had, had this kind of report before. Mm -hmm. So I, I really found it to be very interesting. Yeah. 
you, if you have any sense, I got a larger community in Iowa City with fundraising, why the number of gifts have decreased? Because I would think during a recession and during hard economic times, the dollar figure might, but the number of donors would significantly decrease. But your statement said that the number of gifts decreased. So I'm just a little surprised. Yeah, I, I think probably having a position vacant for oh, okay. so the it bit. was um, any uh, stewardship of gifts yeah, that would have happened right. or, or communications that would have happened during that time. Um, uh, and I, I, mean, I mean, gifts are trending larger, um, but they're out there trending larger, and um, so the number of gifts you know, should, should be increasing over time. So yeah. I think we'll return to those. So you think it was just noise? Oh, yeah, I'll tell you that, um, you know, Barb and I are co-chairing the United Way campaign, and, and uh, there is no United Way in the state that is up in number of donors, and most are down. This, so it's more year. just the general culture. Right yeah, the... Um, uh, so e even people think the economy is bad, and it is hard if, you, you know, if you're buying things. Um, but people think we're in recession, too, and that their jobs are at risk, which is less supported by the data. But it creates a real headwind. So individuals just, are nervous. Yeah, yeah, people are just nervous and hanging on to their money. There's and it's money. paradoxical, sorry, for United Way, because, of course, needs go up at the same time. And so, so it, you know, there is still time to participate in this year's United Way campaign. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, help finding your way to the right place, let me know. <laughs> and, and that data also supports the idea that um, individuals that make larger gifts are feeling less affected right. by this. Right. They're feeling less right. nervous. Right. Um, their money is in different places that are less affected by the day to day. And um, and for that reason, folks that would be more likely to give smaller gifts and increments and like monthly increments feel more comfortable doing that kind of giving, which is right. again ways to why um, really building a strong system monthly giving sustaining program is a is a smart idea for us. Yeah. I loved that quote. I just wanted to share it. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely loved that quote. But this was an unsolicited one that somebody. But it humanizes your number. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Um, miscellaneous. I don't think there's anything there. Um, the president's report. I, I really don't have I a report. Just huh? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if it's anything about this or what, about the um, publicity about the, the free class. Oh, yeah. Right sure. Now. Yeah. Okay. Is this um, duplicating another Korean effort? And does it create any vulnerabilities with us with bringing textiles into the library with bedbugs or other potential issues? That's why we have Fletcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, like often yes, places will say they definitely. want to avoid textiles in a setting like this. We, uh, so this was something that we intentionally kept at a manageable level. Yeah. Um, but you can see the in the photo still there, of, it's a two story rack. Okay. Sort of just in the front of there for sort of quick browsing. Um, and it was intentional collecting too from staff members, so we knew that it would come from. Um, the story sort of um, it brought out a lot of people. And yeah, the story made it sound um, bigger, right? Um, like and, uh, of course, uh, you know, it's yeah, it, it's one of those things where it sort of made it like, well, we don't have plans on making this much larger. Um, and so it's been a lot of feeling, thank you for your, but sort of like when we get calls for donations, of course, it's like, thank you so much. And, um, sometimes you can take them. So, yeah, it's, maybe it's not the greatest idea. We usually take all the books, but uh, we throw a lot. Um, <laughs> recycle, sorry. This is being recorded. <laughs> um, so basically, long story short, Victoria is very intentional about who is on the phone and what sorts of garments are we talking about? And are, are these things like that a teenager would right. actually right. use if you need to wear a suit to a job interview at 16. Um, uh, so right now it's been more about taking inventory of what we actually have in the collection, which is just these couple racks. And they have a volunteer doing um, 
a new aspect of it, which is just to take photographs of things instead and to think about it being like a collab between UAY and us. Yeah, UAY had a closed closet for ongoing. That's why when I first saw this, I thought I said that UAY is okay, I would do that. This is in partnership. This this was started on our own as just for the kids that were here. Right. So UAY and here we've found over the last at least three years. These teams have some Venn diagram, but it's quite small. Oh, okay. Um, which in, in the past, I'd say, was different. But, yeah, okay. You know, actual yeah, sure. observation is they're, they're quite different. Crowds, okay. But we still do a lot of collaborative work together um, to try to bring the groups together. Um, so this was just in reaction to the kids in the space at the time. Okay. Um, and the staff were noticing. Right. And so they just thought, Let's see what happens here with this small thing. So it's been really neat to see as someone who donated clothes from their own closet <laughs> to see the kids wearing this <laughs> oh. more. It's like dressed like a librarian. Day. <laughs> <laughs> they look smart. <laughs> uh, and so there's right now the volunteers are going through it, okay. seeing what there is and if there's been stuff there since we started this in the summer. Okay. I on. think I, I maybe was misled by the article a little bit, so I appreciate that. No, I mean, we do get the calls of like people that I've been waiting to get rid of my closet. I'm tired. I have to do it since I go back 30 years. <laughs> she <laughs> doesn't want to wait. Yeah. 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 Always take an Etsy shop. Uh, it seems like this could be a program, like a swap event. And a situation. Yeah. Well, the university does Possibly. that. Possibly. The, the university, university has does. like a weekend that they focus and they can mm -hmm. go to the rec center where they collect clothes for about the same age. I just know, like, and you have done like a prom. Yeah. 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 Like when you can do it with a high school student group and yeah. it's student group led and advertised in the high schools, you might see a different. Um, yeah. A, a different self. Right. And I can tell you what my, what my concern is. It's kind of mission driven that as we yeah. see greater needs, the libraries are being asked to serve everything. And is this something we want to get into? That we have to be very, very purposeful, or else we will become, as we've seen over many years, kind of a place where every unfunded civil service ends up being dumped. Yes. And sure. we want to be purposeful. Right. <laughs> so we want to be purposeful about what we're going to take on. Yep. And still protect our mission. Yeah, and I, Ellsworth and I yeah. have made a conversation yeah. that, okay. that, that we write down that path. So it's yeah. been a little bit of like, I hope this isn't too successful, but also like, <laughs> uh, I'm, you want to help. At the same time, you're like, it's so cool to see a kid it is. say, I don't have a winter coat in here. I think right. I got one actually. Um, and to make that. Right. And the need's thing. real. The need's real. I don't question the need. It's just, and even when we've done the drives in the lobby, you know, that's probably more our avenue is like working with collaborators and, yeah. and yeah. being the site. Right, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And having people go ahead and do the code. There's one right there. Yeah. Like, the drives make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just when it starts to feel a little slippery. And, and I think that is a, a good generalizable model of, you know, we're the site, but someone else is running it in some way. I see that with so many adult service and yeah. services in particular in SL, there's so many groups locally that you can raise them better. They don't need us. Right. To help. And right. we send people there, workforce development, same with like resume help getting right. a job. Like sure we could offer those one-off programs, but I could also just send you over to Sigmund right. or East Hill and say they're right. in there. Every or if we are going to offer people. that there's some acknowledgement of what the library is yeah. doing and there's some okay. compensation for yeah. some yeah. If it's if it's renewing driver's licenses or between companies, mm -hmm. so we'll don't start on the kiosks. Squeeze it. Talk to you years after. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes, I think this one is targeted enough and seems to be, like you said, coming from the kids themselves that that gives them ownership of that space and hopefully organic rather than systemic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like many teen projects, it lasts until the teen moves away. Right, and, then, right. and then it's kind of it's right, it's gracious. Yeah. You know, right. so, um, this is might be a wait a wait and see the situation too. <laughs> okay. It's been good during 
like MLK months, particularly in the you know, Black History Month too. We were looking through some um, some new books about um, Black Panther movement and how there was like a clothing um, ah. of drives happening through those organizations yeah. too, mm -hmm. communities uh, helping. And so that's getting incorporated yeah, kind of into the site too. Cool. Um, President's report, I don't really have much of a report. Next month, we will be doing the director evaluation. So part of the meeting will be closed session. I also will be appointing a nominating committee for officers for the next year. So if you're interested in serving on the nominating committee, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just call some people. Um. Announcements from members, anybody have? I have more of an inquiry and I'll just say it. Uh, uh, I know, and this is gonna be a Debbie Downer moment, I know that a this is going to be a troubling legislative session at the State House. And so I just would implore uh, everyone, if there are things that are going to be coming up during funnel, especially, let us know. I, I know that uh, there are already things that are being considered with regards to accreditations of uh, school librarians in particular, if I'm hearing it correctly. But if there are things that are coming up and we can in any way advocate, let us know. I don't want to be caught flat-footed on any of that. ILA is working with the Iowa Library Association to do a legislative day. And so if we get more details, um, we were talking about having more board participation on there because it's really important to hear from citizens as well, mm -hmm. and not just librarians, mm -hmm. uh, the power of libraries. And so we need more information about that. We can okay. Give me a day. Great. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> Does Iowa send out legislative alerts? They do. Um, this one just came out this afternoon. About, I don't think I got uh, it. It's up on our Twitter, too. Take a look at the ILA. Agenda. I'll make sure I'm <laughs> subscribed to correctly. It's an action alert for today's. I got it out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you for a couple minutes. <laughs> yep, Anybody else? Um, committee reports to the foundation committee meet? No. We're going to be meeting for. Uh, Ellsworth's uh, review on Monday. Okay. Okay. Um, then moving on to the well, communications, I think we kind of covered maybe already. Kind of like yeah, that's okay. No, I, it's it's good. Um, then moving on to the consent agenda. Um, anybody have corrections to the minutes or? Do they see problems in the disbursements report? No? In that case, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda as written. We'll make a motion. Okay. Okay. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, then next month, I looking at next month's agenda, I think we've pretty much already talked about that. Um, so I think I will move that we adjourn the meeting. Okay.